Okay, this is just an audio, so you don't have to look at it. You can just download the, the audio if you want. I'm going to talk about something that I keep on trying to avoid and yet keep on talking about. How do you vote as a Christian in the presidential election? The answer, truthful answer, I mean, you know, Bible answer, is use doctrine. Okay? God is all about the process. You are the fruit, not what you do. It's about God deeds, not good deeds. God deeds get done when you're using 1 John 1 9, learning and living on Bible under your right male only teacher, and talking to God about it. Now, you can be anywhere in the spiritual life from a just barely able to spell Jesus baby to totally mature. And that process is still the same. The issues you face, the refined character of your sins, because your sins increase as you mature, actually. They just become more refined. Um, That changes as your growth occurs. And when you're new or young in some topic of scripture, because you can be mature in some things and immature in others, you're going to get it wrong. It's okay. It's okay to get it wrong. Repeat. It's okay to get it wrong. What's not okay is to not be in the process. If you're not using 1 John 1 9, if you're not under your right male only teacher, who God himself will make very clear to you who it is, if you're not learning and living under Bible on Bible under that teacher, you're under discipline no matter how mature you are. You're in deep duty with God no matter how mature you are. Talking to him about what you learn is a big bonus because it speeds your spiritual life, but it's not required. That's it. You can be Catholic, you can be Muslim, you can be Baha'i, you can be an atheist. And if you're doing those things, you're growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Daddy. Just threw that at me. Second Peter 3.18, Peter's dying words. Last words he wrote while alive. Well, then it doesn't matter... That, you know, because you've heard me say, probably in the other audios or videos, Oh, Catholicism is terrible. Calvinism is terrible. The SDA is terrible. doesn't matter. Be in the process, because what's ever terrible gets fixed in the process. No other way. So notice, if you're in the process and not mature, it doesn't matter that you'll get it wrong. If you're not in the process and are mature, you're in deep duty with God. Get that spectrum. The lowest baby, using 1 John 1, 9, under his right teacher, learning and living on Bible as a baby, of course, getting it wrong all the time, is better than the mature believer, like pretend me. I know I'm a mature believer. I don't know how mature. When I'm out of the system. Okay? So if you're feeling like intimidated, because a lot of people are intimidated by me. If you're feeling intimidated, don't. Because I'm worse than everybody on the planet when I'm out of the system. Now maybe I'm not really worse than everybody on the planet. Because other people who are more, more mature than me, when they're out of the system, they're worse than me. But you get the, bo- you get the point. Now, that's the setup took me four minutes to do it. So how do you vote? With doctrine. Whatever doctrine you know, it might be a thimbleful. You go to God and say, okay, God, here are the candidates running for office in the Democratic, the Independent, the Republican primary, or if you're not in the United States, whatever your country is. Same application. Okay, God, who do I vote for? Now, chances are real good you're not going to know. Again, it's about the process, not about getting it right. 
So what you should do, or the ideal way of doing this, let's put it this way, because you, maybe you'll come up with a better answer. The ideal way of doing this is to talk to God about why you pick one candidate or another. Let's say you're in the U.S. and you kind of like Hillary Clinton, and you kind of like the Libertarian candidates, and you kind of like Bernie Sanders, and you kind of like Donald Trump. Okay, try to explain to God why it's doctrinally right to vote for each one of those people. As you try to argue it before God, you know, go into a bathroom or something, because talking aloud is helpful. As you try to argue it before God, or maybe write it down, or just think it out, He will actually interact with your thoughts to help you see connections that make you change your mind if you should change your mind. If you don't yet know enough doctrine, he might not do that. But he will still do something to help you. Oh, well, I was thinking Hillary Clinton was good for this, but oh, there's this other thing I didn't think about. Yeah, because he gave you something to your mind. Now, maybe you should still vote for Hillary Clinton. Maybe you should vote for Bernie Sanders. Maybe you should vote for Donald Trump. Maybe you should vote for Ted Cruz, whoever. But going through the process helps train your brain and mature you in the doctrine. That's what it's for. When you're washing the dishes, why should you wash the dishes? Well, what doctrine do you know that applies to being a good idea to wash the dishes? Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? Not are you good. Is it good? It. Not you. You're already bought and paid for. You don't have to worry about the you. You're no good. You already know that. That's why you believed in Christ. Okay, fine. So, you being good or not is not the issue. Is it a good idea to vote for candidate A, B, X? Is it a good idea to do the dishes now? What about later? Should I do them fast? Should I do them slow? Should I wash only the glasses? You know, that kind of thing. It sounds like it's um, complicated. But what you're doing is you're applying the Bible you know to everything. And I've been harping on that for years now. So if you've been listening to me, you know this. Everything. So hopefully in an average day, you've had a lot of practice trying to learn and live on Bible that you're learning. If you aren't learning it under your right teacher, honey, you ain't learning a thing and you're just going to be full of hot air. Okay, I'm dead serious about that. I don't care how mature you are. I don't care if you had all the doctrines 100% right. You'd still be wrong. You need a teacher. Okay? But presuming you've been listening to me for a while, you've heard me say that a thousand times. Presuming you're doing that, well, then you're using what your teacher is teaching to apply the doctrine and talking to God about it on anything, everything, all day long. Which means that your actual day is extremely productive, which means that God is blessing the whole world. The whole world. Just because you're on it and learning Him. And it doesn't matter what you get wrong. It doesn't matter what denomination you are. You'd be a Muslim and do this for crying out loud if you ever believed Christ paid for your sins. Okay? It doesn't matter what the world thinks you are. It doesn't matter what you call yourself. Maybe you believe in Jesus Christ, and maybe you're silently or secretly studying the Bible, and you don't want to tell anybody. Okay. God will work with that. Because He'll take anything. He'll take anybody. He can grow anything in anybody. If you're in the system. Okay, so get in the system and do this. Now, presuming you're in the system and you are doing this, but you just don't know how to think through all these creepy issues. They're not really creepy. They're really important, but they're not your daily life. So you're not sure how to think through. I'm going to just wing it and tell you some things that are kind of important to figure out in at least the U.S. election, but it applies, you know, paradigmally to any other election in any other country at any other time. First of all, a little, some factoids. Democratic versus Republican are the main two primary parties in the United States. When you're electing somebody to be president, they're going to belong to one of those parties. 
ideally, you know, it would there would be more coverage so you could know more about the independents and vote for them too, maybe. But there isn't a whole lot of coverage on them. And for the most part, they don't get elected. Okay, that's a sad fact because maybe they're better. But they don't get coverage. So, you know, the chances are real good that it's going to be either Democrat or Republican. So to simplify your job, you go there. Democrats are all about big government. That's their big thing. They believe that government is be-all and end-all to problems. At the farthest left is Bernie Sanders, and he wants big government to do pretty much everything. He calls himself a socialist. I'm not sure he qualifies as a socialist, but that's what he calls himself. And everything he wants to do involves a big government program. Okay, whenever you have big government, you have big taxes. And no matter how much they tell you they're going to tax, tax the rich, that's not where most of the money comes from. Most of the money comes from the middle class for the very simple reason that there are millions more people in the middle class than there are rich. And everybody's always saying, oh, the rich have all these tax loopholes, blah, blah, blah. They really don't. And actually, the rich end up paying 80% of the tax. Okay? But the tax is designed to mostly hit the middle class class. It's designed that way. It's designed that way in every nation on earth. It's designed that way because there's so many millions more people. They pay less per person, but there are millions more of them. Okay? So if you want higher taxes, because you're going to end up paying them, no matter what you, what you think, if you want big government and you want big taxes, then you're going to pick somebody in the Democrats. I suspect, and I would strongly advise, you talk to God about the efficacy of big government and big taxes, because the history of it isn't too good. Russia, China, even Athens, Greece, back in the 5th century, couldn't make it work. Peter himself, in Acts 5, tried to do the socialist-communist thing. It didn't work. But talk to God about it. Now, the flip side are the Republicans. Okay? They're not the way they used to be. The most, you know, today, the party that's most like the Republicans used to be is the Libertarian Party, which is an independent party in the U.S. So, if you like classic Republican, you probably want to look at the Libertarians. Okay, the Republicans, however, say that they're for small government and small taxes. Big government can only mean big taxes. Small government means smaller taxes. Why? Because it costs less to run the government. So they need less money from the people. Now, the accusation made against the Republicans by the Democrats is that the taxes favor only the rich. And they don't benefit the middle class. Okay, that used to be true. Used to be. I mean, um, about 50 years ago. Okay, the top tax bracket was much higher than it is now. But you had all kinds of ways to get out of it. That's not true now. Reagan changed all that. A Republican. Reagan changed all that. So now, everybody, the top tax bracket is like 35%, 38%, 40% depends. Because Obama has changed it. But he's a Democrat. But in any event, reducing the taxes, what that ends up meaning is that when you go to the grocery store, if taxes are reduced... First of all, you're going to have more money in your pocket. But secondly, so is everybody else. So because everybody else is going to have more money in their pocket, they start to compete to sell things. And when they compete to sell things, the price of what they sell goes down. So your bill at the grocery store is going to go down. Okay? 
when taxes go down and they stay down. If it's just if taxes are only lowered for a year, this has no effect. Two, three, four years, no effect. Taxes have to stay lower for seven or more years. Well, that's what we've had. Reagan ushered in a whole new tax structure back in the 80s. And at first it didn't work, but now it's working big time. And even what even all of Obama's spending is not completely capable of racking it. Okay. So prices ended up being I mean, they're higher under Obama because he hiked the taxes and the government programs so much. But before he took office, the price I paid for meat per pound, two dollars. Now, of course, it's five because of all the junk that Obama's put on. But that two dollar price was the same price as I had paid 20 years prior. So, seven years ago, I was paying $2 a pound for meat. To give you an example. That was the same price as 20 years prior. The prices I charged my customers until Obama came into office were the same for over 20 years. Why? Because I couldn't compete if I charged more. Why? Because taxes and a whole bunch of other things were lower. You see the point? Now, a business has to keep on innovating in order to keep its prices down, or it has to fire people. Which is why we got the problem we got in the election we got now. Because seven years of Obama has doubled our debt from $10 trillion to $20 trillion in seven years. It took us 200 years to get to $10 trillion in debt, and that even includes 9-11. So we got a problem, Houston. Now, if you elect, choose to go Republican, because you want small government, you want small taxes, the bad news is, because there's always bad news, right? The bad news is with the Republicans is um, they're not really exactly for small government when it comes to your bedroom. They want the government to get involved in your bedroom activity. The good news about the Democrats, because I already gave you the bad news about them, is they don't want the government involved. They're going to say, well, they're, they're going to still do big government anyway. But the big government is all about stay out of the bedroom. Yeah, stay out of my bedroom. What you do with your private life is nobody's business but God's and yours. Period. So if you're gay, hey, gay is not even a sin, but if you're gay, that's your business. It's real important to say that. Gay is not a sin. The Bible never condemns you for being gay. It condemns the act of sodomy, which is one person of the same sex doing it to another person of the same sex. But you can be gay and not do anything. It also condemns heterosexuals who are not married to each other. Man and a woman having sex together. They're not married to each other. You know what the penalty for all that was? Stoning. Christ took that out of the law. He took that whole sexual thing, took the whole bedroom thing out of the Mosaic Law in John 8, verses 1 through 10. It's a famous passage called the Pericope Adultery. Which, you know, the religious types want to say isn't part of the Bible, but it's easy to prove it is. Because the chapter begins and ends with stoning. By design. John's design. And it's John's own words. I mean, you know, it's real easy to prove. The point is Christ took sexual things out of the Mosaic Law. In that chapter. So, the law, civil or criminal, doesn't have a right to tell you. How to live your life in your bedroom. You want to have sex with a goat? That's your problem. The law says nothing about it unless you're sitting there and the goat is bleeding and it's 3 o'clock in the morning and the goat is bleating and bleating and bleating and nobody can get his sleep. Then they can call the police, but that's an act of disturbance. Not about you having sex with a goat. You see the point? 
the Republicans would want you to go to jail if you don't have the sexual relationships they think are right. And God forbid you should be a woman and get pregnant. They would regulate what you can do with your pregnancy. The Bible doesn't. But the pro-lifers never read the Bible. They want to give to Caesar what belongs to God. That's what's wrong with the Republicans. Now, whoever is running as a Republican is going to be obliged to follow that kind of platform. Good news, low taxes, small government. Bad news, getting involved in your bedroom. The Democrats don't want to be involved in your bedroom. That's the good news. But the bad news is they want to take your money and give it to some big government program. That's, of course, not going to work. So that makes you think, well, you know what? I don't want to vote for either of them. Then you got the Libertarian Party in the middle. And they have their whole platform, hands off. That means small government, small taxes. Okay, that's the good news. And then they mean hands off everything social. No getting involved in your bedroom. That's good news. Sounds like it's better than the Democrats or the Republicans, doesn't it? Yeah, except for one big problem. They don't seem to be too qualified at what they do. They don't seem to know much about governing. Good ideas, but where's the experience? You do have to have experience, because politics is all about who you know, unfortunately. The other bad news about them is they're hands-off when it comes to being involved in foreign policy. Honey, we can't afford that. We were forced to become the world's policemen as a result of World War II. Actually, World War I started it. And we're still stuck with that now. Russia's trying to take over the Balkans. Russia's trying to take over the Middle East again. China's making noise about trying to take over Asia. And Europe just sits there and wrings its hands. Now, some of them in Europe are brave, but they don't, they're too socialistic. Their governments are too big. They don't have enough stuff. And they're all anti-Semitic, too, pretty much. Nobody's really defending Israel, except God. Of course, that's the good news. But if we have a hands-off policy with the libertarians, then we're saying hands-off regarding Israel? When we need to be in the Middle East, because that's where the terrorists are? And Bush said, let's bring the war to them. If they're busy fighting us in their own land, they won't be coming here to do their little San Bernardino terrorist thing. Yeah, but Obama pulled us out. And that's why we're in the mess we're in. We got to go back in. How much? When? With who? Well, I don't know. It depends on the facts of the situation. Saudi Arabia and Iran are in competition for who speaks for Iran, for Islam. The Iranians think that they should just go to jihad and go to war now. That's why they're building their nuclear plant, even though they pretend otherwise. Saudi Arabia's doctrinal position on the Quran is we have to wait for the Mahdi. That's their idea of Christ's second advent, only they don't call him Christ. They do believe he's coming back, but they, they don't call him Christ. They don't call him Savior. They call him the Mahdi. We got to wait for the Mahdi to come back. And then Islam will convert everybody. So they're more, they're, they still fund terrorists too. The Saudis fund terrorism, so does Iran. They have to. They have to because the terrorists wave their big sticks and say, see, we're the real true Muslims. Because there's, there's certain verses in the Quran that tell them to do what they're doing. They're, they're, they're obeying the Quran to be terrorists. The Quran bids you be a terrorist. It really does. Whole religion is terrorist. But your softer, gentler Muslims either don't know about that or want to just, you know, shove all that in the background. And they want to be political instead. Or just be themselves being Muslim in their own home. Which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. That's their business. 
So libertarians are like, you know, isolationists. They want to just close the borders and we'll just do all our, no more foreign aid. We want to do everything for ourselves at home. Honey, that ain't going to work. Cats out, you know, cats out of the bag. Horses left the barn. The Middle East comes to us or we go to them. Those are the only two alternatives. And if you are not going to defend Israel, then we're failing as Christians. Now, most people in the United States maybe aren't Christians. Okay. But if you don't, if you don't support the only democracy in the Middle East, then you can bet the terrorists are going to come here more. And Europe does not support Israel, really. They mouth it a lot. They're not really ardent supporters of Israel. They're, they want Arab money. They want the Arabs. They're anti-Semitic. It's been a problem for them for 2,000 years. Okay, and it still is. So that leaves us. I'm sorry. We're left. We got more of everything than everybody else. When you're rich, you have to own up to it. When you're rich, you have to admit that this is who you are. This is your role. Take the stage. You can't just slink back into the shadows. That's like a, you know, a 900 pound elephant trying to pretend he's a mouse. Done work. So those are the big stories in the three big parties. Okay, now we go to the individual candidates. And what do you got? Well, in the Democratic side, you got two people who have a fair amount of experience. And experience matters because it's politics. In politics, it's always about who you know. If you want to get something done, it depends on who you know. Okay, the devil's always in the details. And going from point A to point Z in politics depends on you having all kinds of connections with people. And knowing how to play the system. One favor is traded for another favor is traded for another favor in order to get something done. You can talk all day about how evil that is, but that's how it works. Okay, of the two candidates who are running the Democratic race, the one that wants the bigger government is Bernie Sanders, and the one who's actually, you know, a little bit amenable to small government and lower taxes is Hillary Clinton. The trouble with Hillary Clinton, though, and she's got much more experience than all the candidates running for office, the trouble with Hillary Clinton, though, is that she just sort of pushes aside the law when she feels like it. So it's like, well, I want the law to work this way, and if I don't like the law that there is and I can't work around it, I'll just disregard it. Obama's the same way. Do you want somebody like that? Talk to God. Because sometimes he's used people like that in history, and sometimes not. It's not moral to be like that. But you have to ask yourself, how moral are any of these people going to be? So Hillary of the Democrats, if all you had a choice of was Hillary or Sanders, she's got more experience, she's not as principled as he is. But with all of his principles, he's going to run you right down into the ground because he wants big socialist government. Nice guy. I'm not sure how honest he is, but nice guy. He seems rather deluded, or at least he's telling people things that aren't true about how his program will work. Okay? He wants, he's always telling you, you know, tax the rich, tax the rich, tax the rich. Anybody who talks like that is playing on your greed for your vote. So how honest is that person? So on the one hand, it's real obvious to everybody that Hillary's not been honest. She has a huge career. We've all seen her in public life for four years. Okay. And she's got a lot of scandals underneath her belt that, you know, were never successfully resolved to make her innocent. But on the other hand, she's not busy saying tax the rich as much. Because she is rich. <laughs> Alright? So those are the pros and cons. 
Now, on the Republican side, it's a little more complicated. On the Republican side, you got Donald Trump, who knows absolutely nothing at all. His knowledge of foreign policy, economics, yeah, he's a businessman. He's just a salesman, okay? You can know nothing and be a good salesman. His knowledge of everything wouldn't even fit on my fingernail, on my thumbnail. I've never seen anybody be so ignorant. That's a problem with him. But he's a good salesman. He makes you feel good. And the less you know, the better you feel when you listen to him. And what is he selling? Bigotry. Being angry at the so-called illegal aliens. Claiming that Mexico sent them. Nobody sends an illegal alien. Except maybe ISIS. If you're a nation, you do not want your workforce leaving you. If you could put up a a wall to keep them in, you would. But you can't. But, oh, Donald Trump says, I'm going to build a wall. And that will keep them out? Um, Most of the illegal stuff that gets done coming into the United States, it doesn't come through the border, the land border. It comes through sea, it comes through trains, and it comes through air. Oh, you can't put up a border. What are you going to do? Put that, what was that, that series under the dome? You're going to put a big plastic dome over the entire United States? Then nobody can fly here. You're going to, you know, put some kind of border at the shoreline of the entire United States? You can't do that because the shoreline makes it good property to buy so that you can get a view. If you've got a big ugly wall staring you, people won't buy any property. So view bankruptcy for everybody along the coastline of the United States. Doesn't work. And, of course, getting Mexico to pay for it, what? You're going to go to war with Mexico to have them pay for it? Because, honey, you can't figure out where those illegal aliens are to deport them even. So how are you going to stop them from sending money to Mexico? Which is what Donald Trump claims he can do. He can't do that. If you can't find them, then you can't find the ones that are going to Western Union sending the money back. And by the way, all the illegal aliens have to pay taxes, and they cannot get that tax money back. It's called withholding. When you get paid by your employer, say you're an illegal alien, and he gives you a paycheck, it's already netted out the tax. You're getting your paycheck net of the tax because the federal law requires the tax be withheld at the source of the payment. And the employer cannot deduct what he pays you unless he takes out the tax. So if you're an illegal alien, taxes got taken out of your pay and you have no way of filing to get those taxes back. So if anything, we should want more illegal aliens. They can't collect benefits. Because what are they going to do to collect benefits? You know what you have to do? You have to go to the Benefits Administration, Social Security or otherwise, and you have to present an ID. But if you're an illegal alien, you don't have one. Or you have to fake an ID or steal an ID. Well, then you just committed a crime and can be caught. So how much are the illegal aliens really using benefits with fake IDs? Not that many. Because, you know, to get a fake ID, that means you have to go to somebody and hire them to give you a fake ID. And what's to prevent them from turning around and turning you in in order to get paid by whoever's going to pay them to turn you in? So there isn't a whole lot of fake IDs going on. It happens. You have to get a driver's license to drive. You can't get a driver's license to drive if you're an illegal alien unless you have a fake ID. 
You see where this is going. Donald Trump doesn't know enough even about immigration. So then what does he know about anything else? Well, nine months later, we've heard him talk endlessly and he proves he doesn't know a thing. So you're going to want to elect somebody like that? On top of the fact that he insults everybody on the planet? And he talks about his penis? Do you want, do you want, as President of the United States, somebody who talked about his penis? That's like, you know, somebody you, you might laugh about it on some game show, but not for President of the United States. So, dumb Trump. Now talk to God about all that, because I'm giving you my take on it. Okay, then you got Ted Cruz, who belongs to a denomination of Christianity, calling itself the Seven Mountains. Seven Mountains. You can Google on this. Ted Cruz, Seven Mountains. Or Ted Cruz Anointed Seven Mountains. You can even search on it in YouTube. The Seven Mountains of Revelation 17 is a satire by God written by John against political Christianity which started under Constantine. Paul was actually the first guy to write about it. Well, actually, I'm not sure. It could be the Lord. I haven't gone through all that yet because we're going through the Matthew 24 videos now. The Lord could have been the first one to pre predict it. Political Christianity, Seven Mountains, and the whole goal of the Seven Mountains movement is to get people elected into what they call the Seven Mountains of Power. One of them is political, another one is the media, another one of them is business, and I forget what the other ones are because it doesn't even matter. In other words, they don't understand Revelation 17 at all. Because Revelation 17 is a condemnation of Christianity. The word mystery means church. Paul started using that term for church. It, uh, I'll explain why he used it some other time or in the comments. Alright? Ted Cruz belongs to that. He's trying to get elected president so he can be head of one of the mountains. And his father never tires of talking about that. Search on Rafael Cruz in YouTube, Ted Cruz Anointed. See for yourself. And the father talks live in his own words. Do you want to elect somebody like that? Now, Cruz's positions on things are a little squirrely at parts. But, generally speaking, small government. Big in your bedroom, though. He wouldn't know Bible if it bit him. Talk to God about that, because you're hearing it third hand from me. Do your own research. Talk to God about it. I wouldn't vote for that guy for dog catcher. And the same people backing him are backing Trump. So those are two people I don't want to vote for. Because the people who are trying to create the Revelation 17 harlot, obviously misreading it, as if that's what, that will make Christ return. They think that if they create political Christianity all over the place, Christ must return because we're so good. Really? And they back Trump, Oral Roberts, Pat Robertson, Jerry Falwell, a whole bit. All of them. All those jerks on TBN. They back him. They back Trump. They even have, like, fake prophets who meet with Trump and say, you're God's appointed Cyrus. We're using Isaiah 45. Cyrus in Greek sounds an awful lot like kurios, which means Lord. And that's the year in Matthew 25, 11 that corresponds to our 2016. You'll be seeing videos on that. I'll be releasing them shortly. Ah! Huh. Now, you're supposed to talk to God about that. 
don't just take brain out's word for it. I'm telling you my determination before God. And I'm not really 100% sure that he agrees with me as far as whether I should vote for them or not. I'm saying because of what I just told you, I shouldn't vote for them. Now, I know what I just told you is true because I have the hard evidence. And you can get it too just by Google. Just Google on Ted Cruz anointed or Ted Cruz Donald Trump anointed and you'll see it. In the words of the people who are making those claims and add the word seven mountains. You can see it yourself. You can see all the hard evidence yourself. But does that mean you don't vote for them? I'm not sure God agrees not to vote for them. Because he might do something to cut off or destroy political Christianity by using them in office. They think they're going to accomplish one thing, God accomplishes the opposite. So, I'm not saying don't vote for them, but logic would say don't vote for them because doctrinally they shouldn't be in power. But maybe God's going to use it to punish or expose political Christianity for the jerk, the garbage that it is. And put the pro-lifers down once and for all. Get them out of the Republican Party, hopefully. Or whatever he's going to do with it. So that leaves one other guy. In the Republican side. John Kasich. Now, he's he's like a be-all-things-to-all-people kind of guy. He's like Hillary Light. But he does have good character. He does have a lot of good experience. And he isn't interested in being in your bedroom. He's what I would call nominal, nominally pro-life. He nods to it. But he doesn't really believe government should have a role in it. He doesn't care what you do in your bedroom. And he doesn't want the law to have anything in there either. That's the biblical position, actually. There should be no law on pro-life. There should be no law. Because Christ took it out of the law in John 8. About what you do with your private life. Period. He's not... He's into small government and small taxes. And he seems to understand them better than the other two candidates. Because he made a remark that really clued me into it. When he said, business is just a pass-through. What you want to have is no business income tax. And so in Ohio, where he's governor, he has no business income tax. Yeah, he's right to do that. We have the same provision here in Texas. In fact, we have no income tax at all in Texas. All taxes in Texas are sales tax or uh, property tax. For that same reason. And it does. It keeps prices down. He's savvy about that. He's done, he's worked on balancing the budget, and he's balanced the budget before under Clinton, so you know he can work with the Democrats. But does God want you voting for him? If you just went on skill and experience and position alone, he's better than all the rest of them, Kasich. And because he's a complex guy, a smart guy, and to understand what he talks, he says, you have to listen for, to him for like 15 minutes, then most people haven't voted for him because they don't. their attention span is less than five minutes. That's why I always make long audios or videos. I don't want the people whose attention span is five minutes. Sorry. If it's worth five minutes of your time, it's worth 45 minutes of your time. But once you get to 45 minutes, you get tired. So I'm going to stop now. The last part, part has to do with the Libertarians. Who to vote for with them? Well, their convention is upcoming in May. My suggestion there is to watch for the TV. It'll be on John Stossel, a Fox News channel. If you're a Comcast subscriber, and I don't know if it's the same channel number, but it should be 677. And learn about that. That's the hands-off party. Hands off everything. Hands off you. Hands off your money. Hands off foreign policy. And it's the last one that bothers me. But maybe God will say vote for that person. 
The point is, use the process. Be in the process. Use 1 John 1 9. Be under your right teacher. Learn and live in the Bible under that teacher. Talk to God about who you vote for president. And even if your choice is wrong, you got the process right. Peace out.